There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not the same for me Right, so last night I decided to stay at a campsite which is Moorcroft. I needed to charge all of my batteries. They were pretty much dead and I knew that the forecast for the rest of the week is literally rain or overcast so my solar's not going to be doing me any favours. So today's stage is a lot less road walking which I'm happy about. That last section to that campsite killed me. <laughs> it was just so hard on the feet on the tarmac but the guy at the campsite said <laughs> a lot of people do say that about that last section. Always good when you've charged all your batteries and washed your clothes. So the weather has changed. It is pissing it down. Still on like this sort of moorland, walking through heather and things. So it's really nice underfoot and I don't mind it. <laughs> it's a bit different to the other day. Back to Scottish weather. I feel like I need to pick a good place to camp tonight. It is bloody windy. Feet are done in with the tarmac. But still trying to smile. Just coming out of Loch Fanny. <laughs> really windy. Still looking for somewhere to camp. I'm just gonna walk by the side of this little hill and uh, get to this locken. Hopefully there's some flat sheltered spots. Look at all this peat. Absolutely crazy. So hard to know where to sit up. Um, I've been scouting around for about 20 minutes trying to find somewhere that's sheltered. I've gone here, I set up and I'm still not completely satisfied so I kept walking up just trying to find somewhere and you've either got higher which is probably more exposed and full of heather or you've got lower <laughs> which is the sea. Like everywhere is exposed because we're obviously in Scotland there's no trees, there's not a fat lot of shelter. I've literally pegged the crap out of this tent. It is solid, like it's not moving anywhere. You'll have to excuse all my bloody knickers hanging up. <laughs> Love it, gotta eat your bloody dinner with all your underwear. Got something to eat, chicken fried rice. You appreciate your food so much. <laughs> So a relatively mild start, but an unsettled start for some, particularly towards the northwest where we're closest to the low that's bringing unseasonably windy weather at the moment. We don't often see a low like this at this time of year, early June. But here it is, and it's bringing some wet weather and some windy weather to the northwest, especially western Scotland. Treacherous conditions over the hills and mountains of west, western Scotland, the West Highlands, for example, seeing heavy rain at times and winds touching gale force. <laughs> so the rain and the wind definitely come back again. 
so strong. It is day seven on the headway. So I've been living like a hobo for a week now. It's gone so quickly, but uh, way over halfway now. All packed up now. Leave no trace. and it's absolutely amazing how it's dug out the ground like this and then they put it into blocks for burning they probably sell all this that is amazing I'm trying to find somewhere to pitch for tonight it's going to go here but it's so windy After such an intense day of heavy rain and gale force winds, I just whacked my Gore-Tex on and trekked through it until I found a sheltered spot to set up my tent for the night. Well, today was something else. <laughs> the weather has been crazy, like crazy. Last night and today, it's been mental. The wind and the rain and it being so cold. It is nice to be in my tent now, in my little lappy place, trying to sort my feet out. I've had a real mix of weather this trip from extreme heat to now really stormy. My usual morning routine for the trail was get up, make a brew, pack away my sleep system and my tent and then hit the trail. Each day would bring different terrain, new scenery and it was just so stunning to witness. A lot of my days was focusing on navigation and just appreciating the beautiful area I was in as well as looking after my feet. I think as well a lot of the time was dedicated to self-discovery but also just appreciating the simple things of living out of a backpack and carrying everything you need to live.
Right, on the road again. Just leaving Tarbet, which is a small town, but it's like a major town on this trail. It's a really good resupply point that's perfect for getting stuff. There's so many shops and things. Got there, hadn't eaten much all day and I couldn't wait to get some food and things. Looking everywhere shut, it was dead. I was like, what's going on? Asked someone, they said it's a Sunday, nothing opens because it's really religious sort of village. Bit gutted, but I don't know what I'm gonna do for the next couple of days. I've got one porridge left and three dehydrated meals, but no bars or things. It's gonna be <laughs> a few hungry days till Stornoway. But this is the last push now, which is mental. It is a rough one out there. This is where it's real character building and it really tests your morale when you're like all cozy in your sleeping bag, having a brew. <laughs> and you gotta get out, chuck your Gore-Tex on, <laughs> pack up a wet tent. <laughs> but yeah, it's gotta be done, in it? I was just looking last night if there's literally anywhere to get maybe some food or anything and there's nothing today maybe a post office tomorrow this is day 10 by the way which is mental i've been doing this for 10 days how i'm feeling after 10 days my feet are definitely healing a little bit but they have been rough like really bad making some of it just walking in agony because i don't know it's just it was hard on the old feet at times I've been really hungry and just feeling so weak because I just haven't had enough calories. But it's been a lot of mental and physical training, I guess, testing at times. And I've enjoyed that and I've enjoyed that it's been a challenge. Right, so you can just see where I camped. Here's the Lochan. And I was just on one of these outcrops near a little old ruins. But beautiful hike up, bit of an incline and we're coming up this path. It's funny how your life goes when you're hiking. Because you find yourself in like weird places. Like today, just sat in a bus stop. And it's the simple thing, isn't it? Like this tiny little shelter getting me out the wind and the rain. You know what? I'm just sitting here and i'm looking out and they're at these sheep and they get such a hard time because everyone thinks they're crap um and just like they're a stupid animal and they just walk around aimlessly eat grass but <laughs> to be honest hats off to them because they're out in all weather conditions whether it's like hot or like this and or if it's freezing cold in the winter and they're just so hardy so fair play here's me shivering in a bus shelter with loads of layers on trying to get warm again <laughs> and they're out in it all day without a tent it's mental fair play look at them well cute this section included pretty manky weather and no resupply points en route However, it was probably one of the prettiest stages for me with coastal walks and walking through this beautiful forest leading up to some nice views. It is so stunning. I feel like I'm in sort of like Scandinavia with all these beautiful forests. great way to end the day got my meal on got my bed set up and i'm looking out of this stunning view biggest day so far today clocked in 20 miles so i'm happy with that and that means that i'll actually finish tomorrow it is my final 
day on the headway. Um, just walking from where I camped last night, so many derelict houses is absolutely mental and it's mad to be this remote from like shops and things and everything coming in on the ferry. But final day, I have got, I'd say about 15 miles and I will reach Stornoway. All in all, it feels so weird that this is the end. Um, after 11 days, it's pretty mad that it's all come to an end. You definitely get into a routine of like the hiking lifestyle and like living out of a tent. I'm looking forward to not being hungry all the time and resting my feet and seeing friends and family and things. I got up at four this morning, it was so light and really windy. I thought, oh sod it, I'm just gonna get up and, and go. So it's still really early now. What a day. That last section is an absolute killer on the feet. I can barely walk now, my feet are done in. It's just the tarmac, it does your feet in. And um, I've definitely got new blisters because my feet were just starting a hill and now they've gone back to square one. But I'm so close to the finish, I'm 0.5 miles away. I've just been in the calf and the guy said I'm allowed to set up my tent outside and use the, the outside toilets, which is really kind. I'm so glad to have some food in me and some coffee. There she is, the official end of the Hebridean Way. That's 155 miles, 10 islands in 11 days. Crazy, done and dusted. Hebridean Way completed it, mate. <laughs> Thank you for watching. What an epic journey it's been. It's been absolutely mental. I've seen some beautiful things. My feet are hammered. It's been a real challenge, but it's been so stunning as well. And I've loved it. <laughs> With tired legs and sore feet, it was a relief to finally stop walking. But also really strange once you get in that routine. I really enjoyed this journey and it was so beautiful exploring the Outer Hebrides. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching.